Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well. And I am reviewing your music. That is the name of this segment here. Essentially, I've been asked many times over the years if I could do some kind of regular segment where I take on the music of the people who watch my videos. And that's essentially what we are doing here. I haven't completely hammered out the kinks yet. This is, you know, it's it's the first time I'm doing this. We're beta testing. Uh, so I've just hopped onto social media. I've asked people to submit music that they've made, and I will just kind of go over it and give my opinion, whatever that opinion may be. Keep in mind, uh, we're going to be going over songs people have made that are not necessarily professionally produced or handled. So, you know, I'm not coming on here and trying to uh, bully anybody or make fun of anybody's music or clown anybody necessarily. I'm not trying to put a harsh spotlight on anybody whose uh, mixes or production may be a little rougher than uh, one might be used to listening to because uh, some of the stuff here might just kind of be homegrown, you know? So obviously everybody here has voluntarily taken part in having their music assessed by me. I have gotten over 7,000 replies to this tweet over here, so uh, I'm obviously not going to be able to review all of those. Uh, I'm going to try to just kind of peruse a handful of tracks that I can get through and give my assessment, give my opinion, and uh, let's go. All right, the first track I have just kind of happened upon here comes from this guy who looks like he goes by the name of Michael Gannon. The song is Bad Boyfriend, a production from Rare Bear. Uh, let's give it a shot. I'll give my thoughts on it. Give it a taste. Uh, ba bam I'll tell you guys, my friend, okay, okay. That's just a friend, okay. Why she stay on the Another bad bitch need a bad boyfriend. But I'm thinking about you. I can hurt her down. Okay, uh, <laughs> there are some good elements to this track that I, I think are appealing. I like the dreamy aesthetic. I like what sounds like those very splashy guitar chords. It does kind of create a very cute vibe and atmosphere. I think the groove of the beat is nice, even if the kick drums are a little overly oppressive. Like, I think they could be reeled back just a little bit because this is not a banger. You're just kind of writing in a way an anti-love song over here, which I do like the concept of. Honestly, it sounds like a love song. It sounds like a lovesick ballad, but you're just rap singing about how <laughs> terrible of a boyfriend or a significant other that you are. And on top of that, the only other major issue I have is just with the vocals and some of the lyrical choices. I guess I just feel like on the vocal end, there's not a whole lot of emotional investment. You know, it just sort of sounds like you're very flatly delivering the song in a way where there's not a whole lot of energy. There's not a whole lot of punch. You don't really seem like you're getting that deeply into the character. Uh, it just kind of seems like you're just delivering the lyrics uh, to a pretty decent melody, uh, but without much, again, conviction to it. So uh, if you are trying to embody a character here, I, I feel like uh, uh, vocally speaking, you haven't really gone far enough to convince me that you're doing anything else other than just kind of like painting a picture and spinning a narrative, not actually being that person, being that depiction that you're trying to deliver in the song. Oh, here's that troublemaker Jax films, that naughty, naughty Jax films. What are you doing in here, Jack? You got all that YouTube clout. You don't need no reviews. Okay, I'm not sure who this person is, Machine Plus, but, uh, you know, seems like it could be an interesting bit of album art over here. Uh, Birds Can Sing by Machine Plus on Bandcamp, 11-track album. Uh, I guess I'll just click on this, and whatever track pops up is the track we will hear. Uh, the song Exist. Yeah, let's, let's hear it. Okay, we've hit a bit of a quiet spot. I'm not sure where the track progresses past this. Seems like it just kind of coasts down for like a minute, but uh, Machine Plus Exist, pretty cool tune over here. Interesting mix of sounds and genres. I mean, there's a little bit of electronica in here. There's some shoegaze in here. There's some dream pop in here. 
Uh, there's some bedroom pop in here as well. I like the crunchy kind of springy acoustic guitars. They have a driving hypnotic vibe to them. Uh, the walls of synthesizers are nice. The pounding beat almost has kind of like a, um, a chill wave aesthetic to it. There are elements to it that remind me of like old Toro y Moi, old Animal Collective, uh, again, some 90s shoegaze stuff. Uh, some weird alternative, and you know, this is obviously on Bandcamp, some weird alternative Bandcamp electronica that has almost, again, a chill wave, vapor wave kind of vibe to it. The one thing I didn't really care for all that much was um, some of the strange chorus effects on the vocals had a somewhat sour quality to them that I think uh, worked against the very euphoric atmosphere of the song, honestly. Uh, but I did like a lot of things about the track. I also like the progression of the song quite a bit, the way that it kind of worked into this faster pace with punchier percussion toward the end, I thought was like a really great escalation. So yeah, I don't really have anything all that negative to say about this track. Really creative song, beautiful sound, very serene, very pretty on the ear, uh, certainly fits the, <laughs> the cover art, I guess you could say. So a uh, nice track, fun song, uh, fun little bit there. So yeah, let's, uh, let's move on to the next one. And again, keep in mind this and everything else I'm going to be talking about linked down there below in the description box. Okay, next one. Okay, I'm, I'm a little stopped in my tracks over uh, this right here. <laughs> Bubby's Cream by Kojak. Kojak. Um, not familiar with uh, this artist, obviously, uh, it's on Spotify. Let's try to give it a shot. I need to pop over there to the web player. All right, uh, Bubby's Cream, here we go, from Kojak. I do like that spelling, the Ko, uh, J, and then the A, Q, U, E. That's very creative. Uh, hopefully I'm saying it properly. Uh, Bubby's Cream, let's give it a shot. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, I mostly dug this track too. Uh, things that I liked about it were, I liked how smooth and jazzy and very serene the beat was. Uh, it had sort of an oppressiveness to these heavy electronic keyboards or rather electric pianos, I, I think they sort of sounded like. I liked what they were shooting for, but I think there was something about them that they were a little overly heavy because I think they drowned out the vocals quite a bit, maybe more than you would want on a song of this style. Like, it's not that aggressive of a song. It's not a banger or anything like that. Uh, the vocals are super subdued. Um, I do like the accent coming through on the voice. It's actually kind of cute. I couldn't quite place it, but uh, obviously it's... Maybe there's like even a Scottish or an Irish uh, quality to it that, again, I can't quite place. And it was also buried very deep under the beat. So I couldn't really get a full taste of it, but I digress there. Um, I liked the abstract hip hop, but also lovesick hip hop angle that the lyrics were shooting for on this track. I thought it was a little off putting at first, but the more that the song progressed, the more it kind of grew on me a little bit. It does have... Um, like a confessional quality to it, a very intimate confessional quality to it that I think is pretty cool. Um, I couldn't quite get into a lot of the esoteric references and sort of symbolism that I think the guy was getting at. There was like a bit where he was rapping about, uh, and keep in mind, the rap style on this track is much closer to even spoken word, um, which I am into, but uh, if we are going to go in that direction, I, I very much wish for uh, a vocal that is a bit higher in the mix, maybe delivered with a bit more emotional conviction because there were some points where it felt a little flat, a little under delivered, especially for such a heavy beat. I think this beat maybe could have used a bit more space, a bit more reverb, uh, just a bit more something to kind of create this uh, grand sense of loneliness that the song obviously is, is kind of getting at in a way. Uh, but still, um, I did like the the lyrical tone of much of the track that I was able to pick up and read into, even though there were some bits that seemed like maybe a little bit too coded or weird for me to kind of get anything out of it immediately. But all in all, I do kind of like the sad, chill vibe of the song a lot, and I think it goes in a pretty decent direction. So yeah, not bad. A lot of creativity so far. I haven't been uh, massively disappointed by anything, though I have been uh, 
actively avoiding stuff that just obviously looks like a meme on the surface. Uh, I think I want to try to give people a shot here who look like maybe they're kind of giving it their all. All right, so generally in this segment, I do want to cover more artists who obviously are just going independent or don't really have like a following or, you know, just like some DIY shit. However, you know, I, I'm not against reviewing bands or artists who might be a bit more established or, you know, have a following, but I haven't heard of them or I haven't covered them at all. So I, I don't know what this band is. Their name is Few Jar. Uh, again, never heard of them before. Uh, they have the song on Spotify called Treasure. Um, let's give it a shot. Let's see what's up with it. Uh, what's the band's MO? Looks like some pretty creative uh, singular album art right there. I do kind of like those lines going through the hand. That's a, a very interesting piece of imagery there. But yeah, let's give it a taste. Let's give it a try and, and see what Fujar is all about. Okay, apparently this was like the last song on the album, but there's space here at the end of the track for like a secret song, which is something that I haven't seen anybody do since the 2000s. So kind of peculiar that uh, this band would kind of carry on that tradition, but whatever. An interesting mix of influences to this song that I just did not see coming whatsoever. It has the depressing and frigid atmosphere of a Radiohead song, but then also the romping groove and the rudimentary simplicity of a Strokes song. And then there are some elements of the vocals, especially on the uh, the chorus, where you, you might hear a little bit of harmony there and kind of a shouty ah, 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 uh, uh, vocal line that reminds me of Bon Iver. So you have a bit of a Radiohead, bit of Bon Iver, bit of the Strokes mixed in there. <laughs> It actually comes together pretty decently. The tune is not all that bad either. Uh, that that little treasure uh, hook there is actually really sticky. The only thing I didn't really like about the track is that the mix is completely out of friggin' whack. Like the vocals a lot of the time are way too high. Uh, eventually when the instrumentation does kind of explode on that hook and you hear that one loud, like ear shatteringly loud drum hit, uh, the, the rest of the instrumentation just still kind of feels flat and doesn't really grow in intensity. Uh, maybe it would all be a bit more tolerable if the vocals seemed a bit more just sunk into the beat a bit more, but instead they're just really, really dominating the mix in a way where uh, it's it's just a little too uh, pitchy. You know, it's, it's kind of hurting my ears a little bit to hear it at a certain volume because you're hearing these massive volume jumps, uh, I guess. Still though, it's not a bad tune. It's not a bad cut. Uh, again, like the mix of influences, like the ideas that are coming together on the song, uh, complaining a little bit just about the sound and the mixing and all that. But uh, outside of that fun little sort of underground rock track with a sad, dreamy, funky little edge to it. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, this album cover over here looks a little a little edgy, enjoyably edgy, so I may give it a shot. It's called I Rob You from a musical project by the name of Died uh, from the album Anonymized Internal uh, Criminals. Let's uh, give that a try, see what this project has to offer. Maybe it's some badass grind or something like that. Let's, uh, let's hear it. It's one minute, 49 seconds, so expecting a... Uh, an onslaught over here. Let's go. Wow. Okay. Again, I thought maybe from the album title for sure I'd be hearing something that's maybe a little overly edgy or something like that, but there was actually a really cool mix of ideas going on on that track. I mean, there were obviously some metalcore elements in the first leg of the song that frankly sounded a little generic. I mean, I liked some of what sounded like uh, uh, these very sour and sinister guitar melodies and maybe even harmonics kind of fighting their way through the grime of the heavy distortion and the pummeling riffs and uh, the really loud drums. Uh, but then as the song progressed, there was like this 
passage that the band almost hit like these uh, quickly strummed guitars or like uh, uh, tremolo pick melodies where it had almost like a black metal metal quality to it, uh, which I mean, black metal kind of gets mixed into a lot of stuff these days. But uh, but still to kind of hear it like worked so. I guess cleanly into a song with uh, an obvious metalcore angle to it is pretty cool. Uh, then immediately after that, there was almost like this, um, I don't know, just like these driving triumphant heavy metal chords uh, that came in after that. And you know what, even though there were a lot of uh, different transitions and sections to this very short track, I wouldn't say it was all that like kind of jarring in a really gimmicky or stupid way it actually flowed very logically for the most part like a pretty coherent and interesting progression um you know the only thing i didn't really care for on this track all that much were again some of the more generic bits that might have just felt like very dime a dozen metalcore uh also like many other tracks on here the mix is a little rough you know there are some elements like the vocals that i wish not only had a bit more originality to them, especially in the first leg, uh, but also maybe I wish dominated in the mix just a, a touch more. Uh, but outside of that, I mean, it's heavy, it's hard, there's a lot of creative ideas flowing through it. Um, it's varied and it's kind of eclectic uh, and fun in that sense. So um, yeah, I'm not uh, sure what else I can really say about it other than just, again, fun mix of influences and everything, which I... No is is kind of a, a running theme in this collection of tracks so far that I've talked about. But, um, you know, I, I think it's very much a indicative of you guys and just generally this this generation's boundaryless sort of music tastes. You know what I mean? You guys aren't really just listening to one single sound or genre and everything. And when you're making music yourselves, like you kind of incorporate all of that into into your stuff. And that's actually a. Uh, Kind of cool. All right, let's give this next project a try. Uh, comes from somebody who goes by the name of Naki Soul. Ambivalent Indifferent is the name of the song. Uh, we have a bit of a like an emo pencil drawing over here, like ink drawing. Uh, helping Head. Uh, you know, looks like it could be kind of cool. Let's pop open Spotify, give it a listen, see what it's doing. <laughs> Okay. I think I have quite a bit to say about that song, <laughs> a mix of things. Um, to start, the things that I didn't care for all that much, the piano playing was a little odd at the start because it seemed like it didn't really know what it was trying to set and where it wanted to go because there was a point at which it was like starting to speed up and double up a little bit with no real reason to because the other instrumentation in the song was still yet to come in. Um, so I think in the future, if this song were to be re-recorded or something, and I think it should because the production is a little rough, uh, but it's still a worthwhile tune. Um, I, I would like to hear the piano a little bit steadier. You know what I mean? Uh, I do think there are some endearing qualities to how kind of sloppily the instrumentation comes together a little bit, especially in the last leg of the song. It does kind of have this cool, chaotic, sad quality to it, like a great Mount Erie song or a great Mount Erie production or something like that. But I also think that sloppiness in a way gets in the way of the song's climax at the very finish, which falls very, very flat. Uh, sure, it's, it's cool to have some unquantized and just kind of off passages of the song that uh, kind of add to the emotional tragedy of the track. Uh, but then, like, when there needs to be a climax, it's got to come together in kind of a strong way in order for it to have that emotional punch that the song is obviously shooting for. I do like the washy, sad walls of bass and pianos and vocal harmonies uh, toward the midpoint of the song. The midpoint of the track is really kind of the most delicious and, and beautiful part of the entire song. And I feel like the vocals kind of hit a stride at this point as well. Uh, for some reason, in my opinion, they come off a bit awkward at the start, but they are beautifully expressive it, at the midpoint of this song uh, with a lot of conviction. Um, I do kind of like the, wanna, wanna, nah, you know, like the, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it necessarily, but uh, uh, she's really giving her mouth a workout to like pronounce every syllable of some of these words. And it does, it does give her vocals uh, a lot of punch. Um, 
So I do like that quality of it. I love the chord progression of the song too. It is uh, very forlorn and sad. Um, again, some of the pacing, the way the instrumentation comes together and the mixing as sometimes at the start of the track, the pianos do feel a bit pitchy, a little overly loud, like they could be EQ'd a little bit better. Um, but still, I think it's a beautiful tune. I think some of the vocal bits are really nice. Some of the vocal layering is really pretty. I do like the sad bedroom uh, sort of ballad aesthetic of the track quite a bit. So uh, Naki Soul, a helping head ambivalent uh, indifferent. Cool tune. Cool track. All right, I'm going to give this last one a shot and see what's up. Uh, this song comes from somebody by, by the name of Chong the Nomad, Ghosts in the Shower. Very cool gripping piece of album art over here. Frankly, the, the eyes on this skull and the way that some of the drawing comes together, it actually looks like uh, my, my late friend Daniel Brissett had, had drawn this. Like the, some of the aesthetics of this is very much his, his style and his vibe. I think that's partially why it kind of grabbed me. So, you know, sh shout out to the power of album art. You guys ask me all the time is, is album art important? Blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, if it grabs your attention, I guess, I guess it is. Again, Ghost in the Shower, Chong the Nomad, uh, let's hear it. Okay, I'm going to stop this right here. This is fucking awesome. This is awesome. Like, there's not a thing about this I don't like. This, this track literally made my day. Um, God damn, how do you even describe this? The first thing that popped out to me, and this mostly came out of the kind of eh, like little weird indie vocal harmonies and, and leads on the track. There's something about it that very much reminds me of the unicorns. Like if the unicorns were still around to this day and had existed through these eras of abstract hip hop, of glitch hop, of uh, trap banger projects like Tonight, and they needed to apply like their quirky instrumentation and aesthetic to like these hard hitting beats, something that almost Igloo Ghost would produce, uh, especially with these really fast, jittery, fun uh, arpeggios that are beautifully layered as the track uh, progresses. I love the, the ascending and descending lines are actually like really perplexing and, uh, and fun to listen to. Um, yeah, I mean, I love the rough, but also smooth and beautiful textures coming through in the mix. I do uh, love the various progressions throughout the song. It's not that long of a track either, and it hands you a lot to listen to. Um, the the silly uh, lyrics, you know, the ghosts in the shower are really cute and just, uh, uh, just like candy to the ear. Um, yeah, this is a really fun fucking song. Wow. Um, I'm really happy to be able to link this to you guys down below because this is cool. This is cool as fuck. Um, and I'm going to leave it at that, I guess. This has been a good flagship episode of this show, I guess, at least from the perspective of, you know, hearing some cool songs, hearing some cool music. Sorry if I'm not uh, super together right now as I'm not feeling 100%. And I'm sort of doing this off the cuff because this is a new segment, a new format. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll continue to hammer out the kinks and, and get to where we need to be on this. I will see you guys in the next episode of reviewing your music. Uh, Anthony Fantano forever.